In this video, we're gonna be talking about how to get started with Flutterflow, and this is for the complete beginner. We're gonna talk about how to create an account, the basic format of Flutterflow, how to use the different elements, and if you'd like to follow along, I have a beginner's guide that walks you through all of the things, how I do this with my students, but if you wanna just get started and watch the video, that's totally fine. To begin with, you're going to start for free by creating an account. Once you create an account, you're going to be taken to a screen that looks like this. Now, on the right-hand side, you're going to say, create new. You're gonna click on that button. Now, there's a few different ways that you can start with this. To get your bearings, you can always start with a template, but I will say, if you use certain templates, you might need to have Firebase set up. So that takes a couple more steps. So what I would do is start with a blank app to just get the lay of the land and then we'll go back and explore how you can be using a template. Let's say create new and I'm going to name this beta test two water flow. And then we're just going to say create new. Now right here, we, 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 we are taken to project name. I like it, that's fine. Where it says set up uh, Firebase, I'm just gonna say skip for right now. Now this is going to take us to the, the format of how we're gonna be looking at Flutterflow. And if you're not used to seeing a format like this or you're brand new to creating apps, maybe this feels a little bit overwhelming. So first we wanna make sure that we get oriented with the screen and where everything is. On the left-hand side, if we start on the left-hand side in the, uh, in the menu section on this bar, we have the build features and then the connect features. If we're breaking this down, build would be what you're seeing, and then connect is kind of the back end, the database, all of those things that you're going to be doing that allows your app to be smart. So the build feature is going to allow you to have that UI building right here, and you're gonna be able to add more things onto this screen. Now, so that's on the column, that's gonna be the column on the left all the way. We have build and then connect. If we look over here, this allows us to see the different elements. We have the most frequently used elements and the layout of elements. I have this section right here broken down as we're looking left to right. So this helps you kind of visualize, okay, what am I going to be getting into uh, using Flutterflow? Now, when we go back into the elements here, this allows us to have different elements that we can drag and drop. So we can drag and drop here. Now, once we drag and drop whatever we like, say for instance, text, that is now going to be on the section where it's going to be the different, uh, basically the preview view. So the, the view of the canvas, what it's going to look like on the device. So again, we can see what it looks like on the page. And if we click on it, now on the right-hand side of the page, we can get more of the detailed view or what we can do with the actual uh, element that we just put on. So this was hello world right here, right? So hello world, if I do this right here, I can just change it, I like pie. And if we look at this, zoom in. If we look at this, now this is changed to I like pie, right? Just same thing with page title. I can just change that to be I page. So, this allows us to understand what we're gonna be putting on the page and all of those things. Now, again, this is the very basics of working from left to right, left to right. And that's important because when you're thinking about what you're trying to do, if you start on the left-hand side and then work all the way through, you can now think about how you're going to be putting this together. Now, there's going to be other uh, tutorials later on if people want, how you're going to be building the formation, such as when do you use containers, rows, how do you build upon those things? We're gonna do that later, but in the comment section down below, let me know if you want to actually learn how to do that from scratch. Now, the other way, as you're looking at this, this allows you to understand what's happening gradually as you're building. Now, say for instance, we wanna know a little bit more information. Well, if we're right here, this allows us to have the widget tree in the, we're still in the build column, but instead of the UI builder, we're going to the widget tree. The widget tree, just imagine this allows you to 
understand or a cabinet keeping all your files. It's allowing you to understand the layering of your app, where everything is. So if you're looking at this homepage right here, right, the homepage is going to allow us to know where we are. But now what do we have in the homepage? Well, we have the column, then we have text. And so this almost allows us to have that tree, all of the different branches branching out for us to understand all of these things and how it's structured and where it's going to be. And here, if we're highlighting app bar, we're now able to see, okay, that's the app bar right here. Then we can visually see it. And then on the right-hand side with the app bar, I can see maybe I'm going to change the primary color. Well, can I change the primary color? Maybe to red, use that color. And now the app bar has changed. So we're working from left to right across the screen. Next up, as we're looking at this, we're going to look at the different page selectors. So we looked at the builder, how the page is constructed. Now we have the page selector. As we're here, we can look at the, we can search pages. We can have new folders. We can view all pages, right? So if we do view, view all pages, we're seeing all the pages that we have in the app so far. But if we click that little button where it says new page, now we can create a new page and we can use a template such as an onboarding welcome page. We can use all different things or we can go from scratch. This time, let's just go from a template. Now I'm going to go with use my theme and it's going to, I'm gonna say onboarding page, onboarding beta page. And then I'm gonna say use template. I'm gonna use my theme, use my theme. Okay, so now, now, I have a welcome screen and this is part of my app. Remember, I can do view all pages and now that's one of the pages I just had. So I have this, looks good. Remember, if I go back into branches or the widget tree, now I can see the different branches and really now understand how the page is broken down. Now, this is helpful if you're just getting started and you're looking at how would I think about structuring the page? This is a good way to look at how a template structures it. So it gives you ideas of what you could be doing in the future. There are some nuances, different builders have different ways how that they structure it, but getting a sense of a template and understanding how it's structured also gives you um, a good indication of what you could be doing with your page and how to structure it with success. So this allows me to see the different elements, how it's constructed, all of those different things from the rows, the text, all of those things. And now I have that as one of the pages in my app. So. I can switch back and forth to which page I want. That was the onboarding beta page. I wanna go back to my home page, and now I have this. So that's, uh, that's nice, all those things. I'm going to do, uh, I'm gonna just go out just a little bit so we can see a little bit more of the page. Okay, so we reviewed the build section in these three different areas right here. Now, a lot of times when people are just getting started, this is what they need to just start visualizing and thinking about their app. They haven't even thought about their database or how they connect anything. So in the comment section down below, let me know, is this a, uh, a side hustle, a project you're thinking about? Are you building this for an existing company and you need an app that goes along with your business? Let me know why you're gonna be using Flutterflow. Now, that is the visual component of what's going on. Some people decide to use Figma to design it before they go into Flutterflow, but talking to ones, sometimes you're doubling the effort because you're first having to know how to use Figma and then bringing in, it in into Flutterflow, but this allows you to have a lot of freedom with the designs that you're doing and the structure. So to save time, if you understand the basics of how you structure in Flutterflow, how you're gonna format the app, then you can design it exactly how you want it um, and, and the, the format of the design device you're using and then go from there. So that's something to consider. Some people use Figma, some people don't. Something to consider as you're doing this. Now that's all on the build section. As you're done uh, with the build section and you can take a look at what it looks like, um, you can switch over to dark mode, 
You can go with uh, display uh, device, hide device, go through all the display resize handlebars. You can do a lot here that allows you to see exactly how your app is going to look like on, on your phone as an app. Once you do that, then you can go over here on this section right here. You can preview the app. And then this will give you a preview of what your app's going to look like once you're designing it in real time. So that's really, really good to make sure that everything is the way you're that you want. The next up, uh, the next thing after we go into the build feature, then we're going to be looking at the connect feature. Now, just think about this for a moment. When you're going into the connect, this is going to be the database. This is going to be how the R, how the app stores data or how smart it's going to be. You need to connect some type of database for the app to be smart. In this case, you can be using Firebase, but you can use other databases and look in the documentation for Flutterflow for details of whatever you plan on using, Airtable, others, to see if it's compatible and how to do this. Now, going into Firebase and how to connect Firebase, we actually have a breakdown of this for Connect Firebase. We have a breakdown of all the step-by-step -step things that you're going to need to do, how to create the account, and the reference of the video that to watch to make sure that you can do this correctly for your app. What I would recommend is make sure that you already have a Google account, have everything in place, so that way when you start using Google Cloud Platform, then you can be able to do this successfully and without stress. So setting up that account is crucial. Now we talked about the format, we talked about the pages, the connect, and also some of the basic uh, settings for your app as well. Let's go down. And what we're going to do is, we've already talked about that, connect. I'm gonna go back to build for a second. And what I would do is, I want you to think about what kind of app that you want to create. What kind of app do you want to create? Are you trying to create a marketplace? Are you trying to create a, um, let's see, sorry. What do you love most about Flutterflow? I love the design. Sorry about that, guys. Um, what I would do is think about what you're trying to create. And then from there, think about what kind of template that you want to use with Flutterflow. Now, this is really important. The reason I bring this up is work with purpose. A lot of times people just, because they're free samples or free templates, people will just start downloading them and start, you know, mixing and matching or trying to go with this. But if we're talking about, we're trying to get you paid. We're trying to get you to create a small business, a side hustle, something that can allow you to pursue the things, your dreams, really. So creating an app, be purposeful. What are you trying to create? Have you validated your idea? Do you have customers? Do you have people that you're pre-selling to? Those are really important because you could be caught in a spiral of just learning for the sake of learning, but not acting, not acting on what you want to do. And there are tons of tutorials. You can learn all the details, but this channel is about you creating the business of your dream and creating a side hustle that supports your lifestyle. So what are you trying to create and where are you in that process? Which brings us to our last por portion right here, which we break down is the seven steps to build a profitable digital product. We use the same format for apps and we use it also for any digital products. It's the same exact formula. So as you're going through this process, again, let me know in the comment section section down below why you're going to be using Flutterflow, what, what do you have questions on, but really these are the things that you need to be focusing on when you're, when you're going through this. The seven steps. Number one, find one customer. Do you even have a customer? If you don't have a customer yet, start emailing them. Even before you start going further into Flutterflow, focus on do you have one customer? Then the next part is find out their pain points. What do they need help with? Are you supporting a community? Are you creating an app because you understand a community and there's no app for your community out there? Could be fly fishing. It could be a very niche sport. What's going on? Who are you serving and what are their pain points? How much do they need to solve this? Is it a nice to have like a vitamin 
or are you sol solving something like a painkiller? For example, vitamins, people forget to take them. Do they really find a lot of effect day to day? Maybe not away, not right away, but a painkiller, if you've got a headache or if you've got a migraine and you have a painkiller, guess what? They instantly feel that, re re um, that uh, resolution or they feel better. That's what your app or what you're creating should be a painkiller. Then ask, how would they, how would this change their life? If you're creating an app for a fly fishing group and your app shows them the best times to fish or the best locations, how does that help them? That might radically change their weekends or make them, you know, save three hours a weekend. And time is precious. They only have five hours to themselves uh, that they can spare when they're not working during the week and caring for their family. So now you're quantifying how it's changing their life. And then I'm really serious about this. Ask them to charge them. Uh, before you're done with that, before you're even starting to create anything in Flutterflow, I'm a big uh, proponent of charging, seeing if they even care. And the reason that you're going to charge or see if they're going to pay you is if it's not strong enough that, for them to pay you, you might be wasting your time building your app, or you could be wasting hours or months or hundreds of hours when you could try to find out ways to pivot or understand if there's a deeper problem in what you need to solve with your app or your idea. And then if they're ready to pay, send them a payment link. You can send them a Cash App link, link. you can send them a PayPal link, whatever you want, uh, Venmo, and you're testing all of those things to see if they're serious. And more than 99% of all apps can be solved to see if it's the right fit this way. 99%. Most people are afraid to ask people for money. So they hide behind building and trying to figure out things, what they need to do with their app. And then by the time it's halfway decent and done, they don't have product market fit because they never asked the hard problem uh, questions because it was uncomfortable. So looking at these seven steps, how to become profitable with your app, and then deciding, should you build with Flutterflow? What should you do? That's really going to speed up your, your building time with Flutterflow. What features do you need to build? Not something that you want or nice to have. What are people willing to pay for? And that's just one of the lessons that you find in Docs Docs. We do this all the time. We talk about how to build digital businesses, different ways that you can do this. And really along the way, how to build databases, how to build your app and all of those things. That's all found in Docs Docs, the links down below. If you like these kind of videos, consider liking and subscribing. We do this every single week. And if you have more questions, make sure that you ask them in the comments section down below.